My walk in the Forest of Dean today takes in many of the old mining sites of the Northern Forest, including the Trafalgar, Northern United and evocatively named Strip and Attit collieries. These are reminders of the area's industrial past, including railways and tram roads, brickworks and quarries, but also tranquil wildlife spots in the forest. This part of the Forest of Dean is called Speculation, and it's been many years since I was last here. Brings back some very interesting memories too. The walk started at the site of the Speculation Colliery, the name hinting at the precarious nature of the industry in the Forest of Dean. It was abandoned in 1925, and is now only represented by the levelled tip and a filled-in shaft. I joined the disused railway line, now a cycleway, running past the picnic site. After a short distance, I forked left onto the lightly used Lidbrook track. I followed the track through a wide cutting, eventually rising to the left of the old track bed, as it approached what I was looking forward to seeing next. This is Myrie Stock Bridge, another relic of the Seven and Y Railway, which crossed the Lidbrook branch. Forest iron ore was in demand at ironworks in South Wales, and the Lidbrook branch was conceived to allow a more direct route to ironworks at the heads of the valleys. The line was to connect at Lidbrook Junction with the Ross and Monmouth Railway, then being planned. The Lidbrook branch was authorised in May 1870. There was to be a triangular junction at Lidbrook, enabling direct running towards Ross on Wye, but this was never built. I walked onto the bridge, where I looked to the left to see the entrance to the disused Myrie Stock Railway Tunnel, out of use since around the mid to late 1950s. At some time in the 1970s, this tunnel was blocked and the cutting at the Lidbrook end was filled with colliery waste. This has now been re-excavated and it is intended to use the tunnel as part of the cycleway. Moving on from Myrie Stock, I followed the path that crossed the bridge and headed southeast.
I continued on a good path, which crossed a gravel track, curved left, and climbed steadily. At the top, I came on to a prominent ridge, just beyond Serridge Lodge. I was now walking along another section of the Weiss's Way. I kept on the ridge until a stile appeared on the right. Going over this, still on the Weiss's Way, I dropped down through open woodland, heading for Trafalgar House, once the home of the colliery owner, Sir Francis Brain, with the eponymous colliery to the right the position of its twin shafts marked by large rocks some ten metres apart. Uniquely among local collieries, Trafalgar was gaslit underground, but was badly affected by flooding. Leaving the Weiss's Way, I climbed to the left of Trafalgar House and zigzagged back up onto the ridge. I then dropped down the other side on a tarmac lane, which bore sharply left to reach Puzzle House. This was formerly a mine owner's house next to Strip and Attit Colliery, the only remains of which are scanty concrete and stone foundations. Well, I'm turning sharp right along this track now, which takes me through Serridge Green. past the Colford Brick Company's works before reaching the more attractive surroundings of Steam Mills Lake at Dam Green. This was once the site of open casting, but now fringed with water lilies, it is a large deep lake very popular for fishing and boasts a wide variety of fish including carp and bream. The lake is fed from a small stream, which is a breeding area for wild brown trout. It has been known for deer to have been spotted taking a drink from the stream, or even wild boar digging the path up. Wonderful. You know, there's nothing more calm and relaxing than walking beside water. It's weird actually because 
although I explored the Forest of Dean thoroughly over the years, and I remember coming to this particular spot, I think the last time I came here, I'm guessing probably be over 30 years ago, but it's different to how I remember it. I don't know whether that's because the memory cheats, I know the memory cheats, but the landscape of the forest will have changed as well because some of the trees will be felled and a lot of new ones will grow in their place. So the landscape does change over time. But this is very different to how I remember it. But it still is beautiful, so nothing lost there. I turned right at the end of the lake, now following the track through Cinderford Linear Park to the south. Linear Park is part of the regeneration of the area, turning a once derelict piece of forest into a nature reserve. eventually went right onto a track, which converged with a line of the former Seven and Y railway. When the track turned sharply left, I went straight on along a black path on the line of the railway. The Gloucestershire Way came in from the right, and the route ahead became very clear, on a slight embankment through Lennox Hill Plantation, its plants including common stonewort in shallow pools by the track. My path eventually came to the site of Drybrook Road Station. Turning left here, I walked along a tarmac lane and headed for Crabtree Hill. A cast iron sign on the right at Crabtree Hill commemorates the re-enclosure of the area in 1896, while the heathland ahead is at the centre of an interesting project aimed at restoring lowland heath, potentially using cattle and ponies to increase grazing pressure and improve the nature conservation value of the site, which already hosts warblers, tree pipits and fallow deer. I turned right by the cast iron sign following the edge of the woodland. I continued straight ahead over three crossing tracks, the first of them carrying the Gloucestershire Way. Bluebells carpet the woods in spring, nuthatches and tree creepers can be seen in the lower canopy, and fallow deer graze among the trees.
At the fourth crossing track, I turned left onto a dirt road and immediately forked right into Serridge enclosure. At a purple post, I left the track, where I turned right and crossed a stream, before climbing up to go straight across a cycleway at the site of Serridge Junction. Serridge Enclosure is a key wildlife site, where goshawks circle above, and crossbills, hawfinches, bullfinches and brambling can all be seen in the trees together with foxgloves in summer and a variety of fungi in autumn. A narrow path went off to the left, which I followed as it curved sharply round to the right and headed back towards where I had started my walk today at Speculation. Well, that's the end of another lovely walk in the wonderful Forest of Dean. And well, I'm back at Speculation now where I started my walk. Last time I was at Speculation a long time ago, friends of mine were falling down mine shafts. But I make sure I watch my step today so I don't do the same thing. Back to my car now, and I'm going to be booking into a nice guest house tonight. Looking forward to it.